Now, probably at some stage, a lot of us have fancied owning an XJS. Um, is it a wise move? Well, I'm afraid you're talking to somebody who's slightly biased on the subject. I've never liked the car, even when it first came out. When you consider what it replaced, the E-Type, and to me, this is designed by committee. I mean, it's been around a long time since, what, the it's early 70s, wasn't very, it? Very, very popular car. Very popular. Um, you've got to be very careful with the early ones. Extremely careful, because they can corrode around you. And, of course, the V12, when you consider how long it changes, it, it costs to change into... Um, a new set of plugs. It's four hours for an experienced me mechanic to replace them. Is it because they're difficult to get at? Very. We, 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 if, if this was a V12, I could show you why. Um, but this is the 3.6. This is the better one. This is the more usable car. It has the fuel consumption of the saloons, but it has the what we call the pose value of the, the boy racer. So inside, I mean, you're costly with all the wood yes, and the leather and all the rest. Yes, it's a Jaguar inside. There's, there's no doubt about that. It's got the comfort of a Jaguar. It drives like a Jaguar. But it's the only car I know which is so big that you can't get four people in. Yeah. I mean, it's got two seats in the back, but you'd have to be, you know, a contortionist to sit in them. It doesn't appeal to me in the least. I'm a salute man, through so, and through. So again, if you go for an XJS, you can again look for something a bit newer. If they want trouble-free motoring out of them, they go from H onwards. Because the H reg are all unleaded, every one of them, where the early ones weren't. I mean, this is a leaded car. This one's not a problem. It's only a timing change where you can change it to unleaded. The V12 is a major job. Where are the, where are the bad spots around the car? The worst spot is the boot on one of these, but you've really got to be careful with one of these. Lift the carpet up, make sure there's no corrosion underneath because the front leading edge there can disappear on you very quickly. Mm -hmm. And it can look good when you first look at it, but push on it. Get underneath and have a look underneath. You then look underneath the bonnet. You check, it doesn't look anything at all there, but you make sure you look right down each inner wing. Make sure there's no corrosion down there because that can be very expensive, very expensive. Make sure all the, the, um, the front leading edge here, especially where the, the hinges are, are solid. Around the inner, inside of the back of the bumper, on the wings, around there, back and front. Majority of these cars do have what we call door drop because of the weight of the door. And you can tear it, it just drops ever so slightly. This one's quite good, That's but the other good. side is, yeah. is uh, uh, it just drops a little bit. It's not expensive. It's only another hinge on there. It's very, very, very easy to repair. But make sure that they do have a boot. The worst problems with them is boot area. So what goes wrong around here? This basically corrodes off, disappears. If you check underneath, make sure it's all solid. Yeah. All these are here. There's no corrosion inside. Then check. Lift the, the carpet up underneath. Make sure there's no corrosion inside there. All around the back edge here, all underneath here. Make sure that that is still intact because they can literally fall off. Make sure all your chrome's okay because that's damned expensive to repair. Very, very expensive. Any part of the chrome work on an XJS is expensive. Same as the XJ40. They're not quite as bad on the newer models, but on this model, they are expensive. So if you're going to buy an XJS, you're going to look for something that's run about H reg onwards. H reg. What oh. should you be paying for something? Oh, you're going to be paying anything from 7,000 up to 10 for a good one. For years and years and years, I'd always fancied a Jaguar XJS. There was just something about them, the style, the grace, the presence on the road. And so I eventually bought one. Perhaps you get swayed by things like the cars appearing in television programmes like Return of the Saint. Ian Ogilvy drove one in that. And you think, yeah, I'll buy one. So I bought a 3.6, an F registration one. It cost seven, eight thousand pounds. And it was great for a few months. And then it started to cost me money. Things like the air conditioning decided to pack in. So it went off to the dealer and pumps needed changing. It'd have to have a whole new gas supply into it. And it set me back nearly £1,000 just to have the air conditioning sorted out. Money I never got back in the end. But there's just something about it. Again, the wood, the leather. It's such a big car. 
trying to maneuver it on the road can be somewhat difficult, particularly if you're trying to park it in tight spaces. The 3.6 is certainly the pick of the engines to go for if you're going to go for this sort of age of car, something like an EF G reg car over the V12, which is just such a thirsty beast. Try and look, though, if you can do, if you want an XJS, for something like the later 4 litres. They were introduced around about 1991, 1992, and were a huge step forward. The 5.3 V12 continued for a few years, and then that was replaced by the 6 litre V12. At the end of the day, you get what you pay for. You should certainly be at least looking to pay, well, upwards of £10,000 for a decent XJS. The Celebration models, which were the last of the XJSs in the runoff around about 1995-1996, are still holding good money, and you could pay, well, £20,000 for an XJS Celebration.